Hello everybody and welcome to this week's video. As you can tell, I'm trying out a new ang angle, seeing how that, how this works. And also you can probably see see the snow in, in, in the window, which I always love. Um, thank you for j joining me this, this week. Uh, as always, let's get things kicked off by th thanking our lovely sp sponsors. Uh, thank you so much for su supporting my work on Inkscape. Um, there's no way I would be able to do um, any of the work that I do during the week with, without your help. Uh, let's get into what we've been up to this week. So if I feel a little, if I seem a little um, slow today, it's because our household has had COVID this week, uh, which has meant I, I've been feeling pretty run down. So I don't feel like I got to as much work as I wanted to. Um, stay safe, everybody. Uh, this Omicron stuff is no joke. So we're going to start off by talking about the object dialogue. Um, last year, I uh, implemented a new ob object dialogue thanks to Adam. Um, I've been monitoring the bug reports, and we got a, a significant num number of bu bug reports. So I felt like it was time to spend a bit of time fixing some of the issues. Uh, so I put together a package of fi fixes, including um, shift cl clicking, uh, the way in which uh, selecting layers works, um, some icon fixes, you know, just like tidying stuff that people had uh, noticed using the uh, the object thing. I also had to clean it up because the um, the buttons weren't working the way that you expect them to. Uh, I had to make it so that delete uh, wasn't just the equivalent of you hitting the delete key, but it was actually deleting items in a way that you'd expect. Uh, that was a bit more rewritey than just uh, nudging thing, things along. Um, but that package is merged, which is great, um, which makes the objects in dialogue a little bit better. Uh, we also have a couple of fixes for the multi-page stuff. Um, I'm still collecting the bug reports from the multi-page. Thank you to everybody who has been um, helping me by testing it. Uh, there was an issue with the alignment where uh, if you try to align by page, it didn't align to the current page that you were on. Uh, this was just a regression from when Tab did his G G actions work. Um, basically, we were working on the same code base at the same time, and during that process, my ch changes got trashed, um, and so I had to put those ch changes back in. Um, finally, uh, con continu con continuation from last week, uh, we have the um, the export dialog. Um, this has actually been involving a, a couple of different kinds of um, changes that I, I wanted to make. First of all, fixing a lot of the uh, user experience issues with it, making it so that, for instance, it didn't pop up a new um, JPEG compression um, preferences dialog as you're doing the batch um, export. Uh, I also wanted to make it so that I could move the preferences around. I need to be able to take the PNG uh, preferences out of the dialog and put it into one of these like pop-up preferences because I'm, I'm not happy with the way that it is just sort of lying there as advanced options. And um, I also had a play at trying to make the um, extensions, this is all extensions, not just export extensions, have the ability to give Inkscape a progress about how far they're running through the pro process. This is highly experimental and um, it works-ish, but uh, there's probably going to be for the, for the future Inkscape, I think. And because right now what, what happens is Inkscape just freezes until the extension is finished. Um, so that, that's in its own branch, though. I've made sure that that's its own thing. It won't interrupt with anything. The reason why I did that is because uh, the raster gra graphics tend to also freeze in Inkscape as you export them. Say, for instance, if, you, if you're doing a, an opti PNG, optimized PNG export, and it will just freeze Inkscape for a while. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to uh, have that in a future Inkscape, but we'll see. Um, for now though, I think it will just be a case of um, improving this export and dialogue more. As I said before, I did actually want to work on the uh, this, especially this, ex this export and dialogue. I'd hope to be able to work on it more this week, but um, I don't know, I've been feeling really tired. And uh, thank you all for, for, for watching. Uh, let me know in, in the comments below what you think. Uh, you can comment on the angle. You can comment on the uh, in-news seg segment and we'll see how, how that goes. Uh, I was hoping to put a little bit more energy in, into it, but uh, 
these things, they, they start out slow. We'll see how they go. Um, but thank, thank you all, and I'll see you all next week. And in other news, we have Inkscape news this week. I'm trying something new. This week, we have Thomas Holder, who has uh, implemented some of the properties on synthesis symbols from the SVG2 spec, which allows Inkscape to render things in the same way that Firefox and Chrome does. We also have uh, Javier, who has continued his work on the live path effects, this week uh, allowing you to uh, use the rubber stamp fun functionality with live path, with live path effects without break breaking them. If you've not used the rubber stamp, you sim simply drag an object around and press the space bar. Uh, I don't think many people know about that fe feature, to be honest. Um, Mike Klauski has been working on adding a pencil marker to his set of mark markers to round out the set of markers that he has put into his new marker widget. Um, it's also a colored mark marker, giving a great exam example for how you can have non-black uh, and white mar markers. And we also have Ashatosh has cut his teeth on a new uh, merge request to just sim simply move the uh, layers in indicator on the status bar so it looks more like the layers and objects dialog than the new one. Uh, this, this is important, but he is a new contributor and he's cut his teeth on a very simple bug. Well done him. Tav, as always, has been w working this week on making sure that the Eggscape project upgrades itself from um, GTK3 to GTK4 by moving to G Actions. As with all good refactoring, Absolutely nothing of con consequence will happen for you users. Uh, he will just continue this heroic work of converting lots of old code to new, new code, and hopefully, in the end, we'll end up with a more modern, uh, rebased in Inkscape that we'll be able to move to G GTK4 in a few, few years' time. I should also point out that Nathan Lee has uh, continued his great, great work on bug fi fixing and has also fixed a few I issues himself. Um, including one involving the Mac OS launcher. Uh, it stopped you from being able to quit. So he changed it so that it crashed. And then he also changed it then again to uh, not crash, uh, which is great. 